I don't know why, but I used to rock the out on my bed playing air guitar to yeah. that. I wish it was someone cooler like Pink Floyd or something like that, but no, that was the song and that's just the earliest memory that I have. We've been called a lot of things and we're inspired by everything around us, including each other. The individuals that have inspired me the most create beauty and positive change. To me, that's the highest form of art and it deserves the loudest praise. This is Shout Out. The art of self-expression. On this episode of Shout Out, the film composer, musician, and metal worker, Cody James. You know, since I was doing so much music at that time, uh, you know, I was able to walk through there and just have music playing in my head as I'm just sitting and taking in art pieces. And so that was a really kind of magical time for me. This might have something to do with playing with all the guys in Pretty Talk. They're like all at least five years younger than me. Mm-hmm. And so it's definitely helped like keeping track of just new artists. I started doing the metal stuff just because uh, I had access to a welder and kind of some of the materials. So I just started messing around with it. And yeah, just seeing what I could do. And all the while still like, you know, proceeding and uh, continuing on with music. Cody James, thanks for coming on, man. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So I know you as a film composer. You've made music. Um, I've seen you work with metal. Where did this creative path start? Oh, man. It really all started with music. And uh, yeah, I really didn't get into other outlets or really start, I'd even say, really appreciating other uh art outlets aside from music until I was like damn near 30 years old and I moved back home to St. Louis but I was probably 27 and I wasn't really like hanging out with anyone whenever I moved back home I just was kind of in that work uh, head space of just working a lot and so I was going to the art museum that's where I was going like just to hang out sometimes just to get out of the house and whatnot when I wasn't just working on music. I don't know. I just filled up so much of my time creatively with music that uh, I never really even gave anything else a chance. Um, And, you know, I had always appreciated design and stuff like that throughout my life, but it wasn't really until moving back here and going to the St. Louis art museum and, you know, we're fortunate enough around here to have this beautiful free art museum uh, that I was really inspired by. Like, uh, you know, the first time just walking through there, you know, since I was doing so much music at that time, uh, you know, I was able to walk through there and just have music playing in my head as I'm just sitting and taking in art pieces. And so that was a really kind of magical time for me and it that definitely sparked my interest in wanting to do uh the metalworking and just trying a different creative outlet Mm -hmm. and uh i never took up painting yet even though that's what like a bulk of what i really admired at the art museum was paintings and whatnot um but uh you know i started doing the metal stuff just because uh you know i grew up in like a family all worked in construction that type of stuff so uh, I had access to a welder and kind of some of the materials so I just started messing around with it and uh, yeah just seeing what I could do and all the while still like you know proceeding and uh, continuing on with music but it was really nice to have this I don't know it was kind of a renaissance for me personally uh, because I was just able to take in so much more of other people's uh, work uh, outside just your typical paintings or you know the artwork that I'd see with my friends and like working on stuff with you guys and like mm-hmm. seeing the art that you would do 
and always appreciating it because you know you're involved with it you know it's someone you know doing it so you can learn to appreciate it uh, a little deeper when you have that connection but in terms of all the other kind of fine arts in the world I was just a little oblivious to and just kind of uh, unwittingly shut myself out to a whole lot and you know by focusing so much on music but you know I'm not I don't really regret doing that <laughs> you should you should yeah, because you yeah. make you make amazing stuff and music in general has always been kind of a mystery to me because I I'm just not inclined in that way so mm -hmm. the appreciation goes both like you know both ways when I hear you know what you do and what other great musicians do that's what moves me that's usually where my my creative inspiration begins so t if you could take me to like through your process of like do you have any rituals that you you typically lean on well usually there's coffee inside of this i have some tea in here right now but coffee man i am a big ritual person like yeah for all my stuff, like when I'm sitting with uh, the band that I'm in right now, Pretty Talk, uh, whenever Nick and I get together and work on anything, it usually starts off with, you know, sitting and enjoying some coffee and a little conversation over that. And, uh, but aside from, aside from just the little pleasantries like that, you know, uh, I really like just getting, getting down to it. There's nothing nothing really special that I do ritual wise other than, you know, I really enjoy working in the morning. Like I feel mm -hmm. like between, you know, six 30 to 10 30, 11, uh, you know, AM, those are just kind of magic hours. I don't know what it is for me personally. Uh, but yeah, I'm just as long as I'm able to do it, and practice stuff more frequently that's like the more important thing for me uh is getting to uh constantly uh you know throughout the week work on expressing creative ideas and you know not taking a bunch of lag time in between and that uh you know i do that was <clears throat> difficult whenever i did start getting into the metal work was kind of dividing up my time you know mm. what i wanted to do creatively because i wish i could just be the most creative person in the world and all the energy <laughs> but you know it was kind of like had to focus more on like the design and working with my hands and physic more physically or doing the you know body atrophy <laughs> uh, music realm and everything like that yeah um so uh you know i definitely have always just music has always been my passion um but uh you know learning coming back home and kind of opening up my uh, creative realm of just what i appreciate that uh, has helped a whole lot a whole lot just with me as a creative person um and getting to flex that muscle in a different way that i didn't before so when did music enter into your life was there a moment or a song that you heard and you're like that's where i'm going that's where i'm headed uh i i wish there was a magical moment like uh, the the early one of the earliest uh like memories that I have of me, like really being into a song. This is not a cool story, but it was no, that, I, I already <laughs> like it already. It was the song. <laughs> oh man. I can't believe this. It was closing time. Yeah. That, <laughs> yes. No. Yeah. You know the song, but yes. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why, but I used to rock the fuck out on my bed playing air guitar to yeah. that. I wish it was someone cooler like Pink Floyd or something like that, but no, that was the song. And that's just the earliest memory that I have that didn't influence the rest of my life. But man, that is just one of the things. And it just, I'd never had any other people really in my life, like family member wise growing up playing music. And so there wasn't really someone 
like actually there wasn't any really musicians until my great great grandfather was the last one uh in my family so yeah i don't know uh i don't know what that was but i just knew that you know i really really loved music and all that kind of stuff so that's led me down the <clears throat> route of doing uh you know the in the studio work and recording that going down that route and then also you know just the actual creating music and whatnot as well so who knows where else it'll lead how many different instruments do you play oh um you know like if it's got strings i'll play it man you know if yeah. it's got uh, you know and i play the keyboard i can roughly play some percussion sometimes uh the music that you make is amazing and it sounds like you have like a lot of different influences but you're marrying them all together in a beautiful way what kind of music inspires you oh man uh lately like that is one thing that i feel uh is different from all the people around me that i'm growing up with is like my taste in music has been and this might have something to do with playing with all the guys in pretty talk they're like all at least five years younger than me mm -hmm. and so it's definitely helped like keeping track of just new artists that i normally wouldn't be but uh man the influences for the music that we write is so all over the place and i feel like what i listen to all the time is nothing like what we actually sound like because uh, I, uh, I listen to a lot of instrumental, electronic, um, I don't know, John Hopkins, if you've ever heard of him, he's an insane electronic artist. Uh, the band Weevil, have you ever heard of Weevil? Mm -mm. That, those guys changed my life. Uh, they're a full, uh, two group, uh, two guys, but just incredible, incredible stuff. Um, and so some of it can be, you know, that more minimal electronic. Some of it can be out there, psychedelic, electronic kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, man, I'm a little bit all over the place. And then, of course, I still listen to classical music and some uh, keep up with film scores that are coming out. So, uh, yeah, I, I can yeah. hear it. I can hear it in your music that it has like a very cinematic and like storytelling through line. Yeah. And when I heard Gotta Run, okay, so this hit me in a cool way because when I played that, I have what, I've never said this aloud, but I have what I call um, like Midnight Moonroof song. And I'll put, I have like two other songs that I'll, I'll put on and it'll just be nighttime. I'm like, I want to go for a drive. I want to put on a song, mellow out, and then I want the like street lights to wash through. And, it, and there's just a, a certain vibe oh, to yeah. that, to that kind of music. And when I heard Gotta Run, I was like, this is oh, awesome. Great. That's but, fantastic. I, you know, I love hearing that anytime that, you know, there's a specific moment. And you, you know this very well, just from working together uh, with film scores and on your film. So, you know, whenever you can just provoke any sort of emotion or any sort of feeling or if someone wants to listen to uh, your song at a particular time oh man that's so cool you know yeah. you couldn't, couldn't ask for anything more even if uh, yeah I, uh yeah man, that's just really cool i'm glad you took the time to listen to it oh it's it's really cool take me through your most challenging experience with making music oh man uh honestly i'd say would be to kind of where i'm at right now deciding to uh, move back here to st louis from orlando and uh, decide to start doing this band thing again it just sounds so it still sounds so weird to me that i I'm in a band and whatnot and writing music in a band again, uh, just because I grew up 
playing in bands and uh, whenever I moved down to Florida for school and started doing the whole studio work, I never thought that I would, you know, be working and writing songs in a band again. Um, and the whole composing uh, to film and everything was just so completely different than actual like songwriting for music that you would typically listen to uh, most people. And so like that like was a very very humbling experience it was trying to write a damn song like just a typical song um because i'm i was so used to being told where to go right with the music and so that was like a i wouldn't even say it was a crutch because it's just completely different art form in the music but it's still music and it was a very different kind of situation and so i'm still learning how to write music you know i'll always be learning how to do this stuff but um you know that was that was tough like and like i said it was humbling because you know i felt <clears throat> confident in all like the what my abilities that i could do with a score and everything but whenever it came to just sitting down and, well, hey, you can do good stuff over here. should be able to do something good over here. But, man, it's just trial and error, repetition, repetition, repetition. You know, just yeah. pump, pump them out and get to the good ones, you know, and sift through all the bad stuff. <laughs> it reminds me of, you know, like going through different art classes and, and even into college where there was always an assignment and I'm like, okay, the assignment itself would dictate the parameters. Right. And within that, then I would be free to do whatever I wanted. Right. And I would always want to push that, but I didn't realize that those set boundaries, how much of a gift that was. Right. And like you said, it, it, it kind of becomes a crutch because you're like, when you get out of that realm, and for me, it was like doing gallery work. I'm like, well, I can do anything. And I went to an instructor. I was like, what do I do? I kind of feel aimless. And, and she, she had great advice. She's like, do what you feel. And that was the easiest and hardest advice that I could ever get. Cause I was like, right. well, I could be anything. Right. And it took me a really long time to get traction and really know, um, cause you're, you know, it's like anything can influence what you're doing. What advice would you give to somebody that is going into music just like early on? Oh, um, I mean, honestly, just like I was just saying, repetition, like the more that you sit down, whether it's on a computer or just at your instrument, I mean, in today's world, it really helps to sit down on a computer and be able to write and produce your music. Mm -hmm. so you know it's just sitting down and doing that because it's a little bit of being comfortable inside the software that you're using and being able to navigate without having to bog yourself down mentally so that doesn't hold up the creative process and then again just every day you got to give yourself the opportunity to sit down and for that awesome idea to come through and it's never going to come through if you're once a week popping into the studio yeah. or, or less, or, uh, you know, just kind of skimming by with it. I mean, it's just like any, anything that you want to be good at in life, you got to sit down and repeat the process and explore, you know, don't get too bogged down on any one piece. That's been, probably one of my hardest things to try to get over uh, that I personally have is the perfectionism type of thing and always thinking that you can improve it tenfold by okay. doing a certain EQ move or changing an instrument up to a different melody, like by stuff that most people are not even going to notice. Right. Like, 
the the when you start getting nitpicky about stuff and start feeling like you're spinning your wheels it's time to move on and try yeah. something out for a little bit <laughs> You know, that's uh, that's probably like my biggest area that I'm always trying to be painfully aware of. Like, am I diving in too deep on this one little thing? I had an art instructor named Randy and I was in a sculpting class and I remember I was working on this thing and I was sanding it and he would come by and he's like, looks great. It's done. You're picking at it like a scab. And (laughs) That stuck in my head. And like now it's almost like a phobia where I'm like, I want to go, I want to move into it. I want to be inspired. And I love polish and I love polish a little too much. And this guy just, he like called me out on it. He just knew. And he's like, all right, this is where you can improve is keeping it a little rough every once in a while, because sometimes people connect with that even more and you're getting rid of all the, uh, all the things that make it human, you know, make it Absolutely. unique. Oh, I totally get that. I don't know. I wish I would have been told that at a young age. <laughs> I really do. Have you ever, have you ever heard of uh, the book, The Artist Way by Julia Cameron? No, I have not. No, I have not. Okay. Well then I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pass that along to you because this is almost like Nate told me, my brother, Nate told me, um, about this book and then it was like a week later a professional photographer this guy does like work for vogue magazine and everything i just happened to come into path with him and he's like have you heard of the book the artist way by and i was like okay i guess i'm supposed to get this right now and we just happened to be in a conversation about this very thing about like perfectionism and he's like read this And it goes perfectly in line with what you're already talking about showing up every day and making the time and space. She calls it um, morning pages. And the basic practice is just putting in like writing two or three pages of your thoughts. And that kind of just gets you through a block. And it doesn't matter what kind of art form you Mm -hmm. are doing. It's just like this ritual of getting stuff out so then that clears up the space. So you're like, oh, that seems like a fun idea. Right. And it's those like light little fun ideas that I think, you know, start to really take off. But it sounds like you're already doing it without even <laughs> doing. But there are some like good notes in there. So, Right, right. No, that and it sounds very. Have you heard of the, the book, The War, the, the War of Art? No, not the art of war. The War it's of just, Art. Yeah. Uh-uh. It's a very similar kind of uh, uh, outlook on what that book is uh, trying to get across. I think Steve Middlefield was the author, um, but it, he kind of puts a spin on uh, that. I, lo- I, I don't really necessarily think this way, but I love hearing people romanticize things like this, but he calls it just like uh, the muses. So you're putting in your time to allow the muse to visit you. And it's all about that ritual of just making whatever your craft is that ritual. You know, you asked me about rituals earlier. I mean, it's really just sitting down and doing the work, I guess, is my ritual. But um you're just you have to open yourself up and make yourself available for that good idea to come through your antenna really i mean that's uh man that's, you just you saying antenna <laughs> i'm so glad we had this conversation because yeah. you're you're hitting on a couple of little notes that i mean i just recently had conversations about with other with other friends and i'm like all right. This is, this is good stuff. Um, yeah. Just to kind of close out, w- is there anybody that you'd like to do a shout out to that's kind of either inspired you, helped you along your way? Oh my goodness. Uh, mom and dad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I, uh, puts me on the spot right there. I mean, uh, big inspirations creatively has been uh, John Williams with the music that man yeah you know was the soundtrack of my side my childhood and many others and uh 
really got me into doing the whole composing thing. Uh, so really admire the hell out of that man. And he's still kicking it. Thank God. <laughs> can't believe it. Love it. And uh, yeah, man, you know, I'm, I'm running the blank right now. Uh, it's all good, man. Those are, those are three good ones right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Solid ones. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for doing this, Cody. I really appreciate it, man. Anytime, anytime, buddy. Shout out is an Ellering Stories production. For more episodes, visit ellerringstories.com. Thank you.